call. Look who's on the phone. Johnny Frado and Eric the Midget. They're ready Is to negotiate. Johnny Frado on a TV show? I could swear that they're doing Mob Week on AMC. Hey, Johnny. And Johnny's doing some of the commentary. Johnny, are you on a TV yeah. show? Well, I was. It was a Mob Week on AMC last week. They showed all the different mob movies. And uh, I did I, I did a lot of the commentary. I had a real good time, a lot of fun. Yeah, Giuliani was on it, though, and them fuckers didn't tell me he was going to be there because if I'd have known he was going to be on there, I don't know if I'd have had second thoughts. Why? <laughs> you know? Well, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just, you know. <laughs> he probably put a lot of his relatives in jail. It's a little, little, little scary to me. Yeah, but Johnny, I mean, I, I assume you're not in the mob. I mean, your dad was one of the largest mob figures. He ran Rhode Island, and, uh, right. you know, he was a big, big Iowa. deal. But he ran yeah. Iowa. Well, was, he ran Iowa. It, yeah, the Midwest. Yeah, and, yeah. and but Johnny, you're on the straight and narrow, so uh, why would you be mad at Giuliani? I guess because. Well, you just, you know, coward. It's like instinct. You just pick it up, you know what I mean? It's like, right. you know. If somebody's, you know, you, you go from the people before you. So you were like talking about offices right now. My dad had a lot of offices. They were called, they were called telephone booths. He would pull up the different phones, and that <laughs> seemed to be his office. Yeah. yeah. No, your old man. That's why your old man was a success. That's why. Yeah, he never, he never did no time. So let me tell you, he never did time. And Johnny, as a child, was was privy to a, you know, when Johnny wanted to play, his father brought home the, the space sp capsule, the space shuttle. Yeah, Not the space, shuttle. Space capital. The space capital. We, yeah. I, I can't remember what the fuck it was called. Though. We, yeah, we his father was so shuttle. powerful, he actually had NASA's rocket ship in his backyard, right? <laughs> yeah, but they yeah, but they had to steal it, you know. Right. But so still. they stole it, and then they put it back. All right. So well, the okay. reason we're on the phone with Johnny is, you know, Johnny has been representing Eric the Midget. Yes. <laughs> Do you have a reading problem? Uh, hold it a second. I didn't. I, I don't. Who we is, haven't even talked. We to haven't you even yet. talked to you yet. I think you said that to me. Oh. Are no, you talking to me, Eric? I, oh. I said that. I said that to Howard. What the hell did it say in my email? All right. Let's it get says, to your email. Now, now Eric it has. Says the, it says. It says the nickname goes the fuck. Away. All right. Here is a, a oh, letter. Oh, we have to talk about demands? Yeah. Here is a list of demands that For Eric what? wrote to... I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I read these over last night <laughs> in a rather detailed uh, email. Yeah. Howard, by the way, he told me he hated me five minutes ago when I got him on the phone. I said, it's 4 o'clock in the morning, and you hate me. Why do I'm you hate... To get something why done. do you hate Johnny? Johnny's trying to help you. Because... You know, I'd rather be sleeping. All right, look, as far as I understand, <laughs> I didn't contact Eric. Yeah, so he could be sleeping. Yeah, Eric contacted me and said he wants to come back on the show, but he has demands in order to make That's this happen. That's my fault. That's my fault, Howard, because I'll tell you why we're doing this. We're doing this because I had to explain to Eric that a lot of work came, and it slowed down. And I told him, without Howard, you got nothing. <laughs> right. And he didn't understand so that. I spent, he, he, well, before I spent, he did. I spent eight years on this show and only got two acting gigs out of it. But Are you, you could have had 20. Oh, Howard, wait a minute. Let me finish this. Howard, the people that came to do things with him, it would have been 20. If he would have, if he would have took those gigs. Am I right, Eric? Do you realize I, the miracle that occurred? I got Eric He to, doesn't act. You're, a, you're not an actor. B, you have an unusual look. And C, I, I got you two acting jobs that you never would have had in your life had you not been on this show. It's a no, miracle. No, no, Howard, Howard, listen to me. Adult Swim offered him a thing that every stand-up comic would kill for to be a character in a thing. He didn't like it because he felt like the language was too risque. He got it was a fucking... Too satanic. Uh, what? It was too satanic. It was a satanic cartoon. And it's on yeah. TV. Right. Listen, Eric, I'm not sure I understand. Uh, you do want to be back on the show, I'm assuming. Well, apparently Johnny has convinced him that's the only way things right. will happen. So I, the only so, way, I mean, if, he, if he's not on the show, Howard, I can't do anything. Right. Well, go try and figure that out, how you explain that to him. I don't understand how he doesn't understand it. But here it is, and I'll try and work through this with Eric. I'll read these okay. out loud, and I'll tell you what I'm comfortable with. Uh. First, I will do the reading of the Ten Demandments, as Eric calls ah. them. He says, these are my demands for coming back on the show. Now, I, I didn't ask him to come back right. on the Nobody show. Right, nobody was looking for him. 
I did it. I did it. Okay. Here we go. Number one, the nickname Eric the Midget will be gone forever. Also, you cannot use the word midget at all anymore on the show. Uh, 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 even when he's not here? That's right. Callers <laughs> can't use the word. Oh, my God. The staff can't use the word. <laughs> he says, look, I know for a fact from tweeting with one of the WWE superstars that is a little person, and also from meeting oh. and talking to Marty Kleba, you remember Marty the Midget? Yes. That I am not the only little person that hates that word. And wishes that word would just go away. Okay. So, anyway, that's the first demand. I'm, I'm, oh, that's just one. That's one. Number two. All of the bullshit about me being a difficult, ungrateful, ingrate, angry, and all the time mad at the world person comes to an end at once and for all. Oh. I am fucking sick of you and all the fans thinking that I am any of those things. That's number two. <laughs> I'll respond to each of these afterwards, Eric, if that's okay. Right. Number three. Oh. All of the fucking verbal abuse and bullying on the air and off the air ends. Howard, lately I feel like you're a hypocrite. Why I say that is uh, you got pissed off and bent out of shape last week when Lady Gaga's fans were abusing you and harassing you and threatening you on Twitter. And then I read this week you got again all upset, mad, pissed off and bent out of shape when you found out that Dak Shepard and Jimmy Kimmel were making fun of a photo that you took and sent to Jimmy. <laughs> So in other words, he's saying, "I'm a. I, I, how can I but bully when I'm being bullied and I get upset?" You haven't demanded that people change. Well, you change your behavior. As I said, Robin, I will. I will explain what demands I'm comfortable uh, with after uh, I read okay. through them. I was in shock when I read this. <laughs> Number four, enough of putting me in the whack pack. That ends right away. <laughs> I'm not anything like that damn drunk trailer park white trash Jeff the drunk or that complete nutcase that thinks he was taken in pro by aliens Riley Martin or that huge, dirty, smelly, gross, fat, scamming, high pitch Eric. All right. Number five. <laughs> Howard, you say you have many connections? Well... I want you to put those connections to use. Oh, my goodness. And help out Johnny get me more acting gigs. I mean, two acting gigs in eight years is pathetic <laughs> for someone who says that he has a lot of connections. Also, it get, would have been 10. Also, get me on game shows so I can make some extra money. Oh, my goodness. Number six out of the Ten Demandments. From now on, nothing but outright respect when I call in. No more sound effects or talking over me while I'm trying to talk. No more taking calls from worthless, pathetic, loser-ass, prick, no life, having hateful douchebag assholes that all they want to do is talk shit about me while I'm on the air. That's number six. Number seven. I want set call times. I no longer want to be on hold for hours. All right, number eight. I demand that I take Steve Langford's spot on the Howard 100 News team as a West Coast member of the team. Is that right? Since they have an open spot from Langford leaving, I'd like to make whatever he made a week. I would focus on celebrity news, movies, red carpet interviews, and other entertainment stuff. So he just wants Steve's job. Yeah. Hey, at least he doesn't want your job. <laughs> I haven't gone anywhere. Number nine. Also... Trips to Las Vegas, Disney World, Disneyland, and other places that I would like to visit. More trips up to the Bunny Ranch, also the Playboy Mansion. And, tri <laughs> what? and trips to see WWE and TNA wrestling pay-per-view and non-pay-per-view shows. UFC pay-per-view in this country. Also tickets to the remaining, remaining home games of this season for the Oakland A's and San Francisco Giants playoffs. And World Series tickets if one or both of them make it in. 2012 season tickets for both teams. Tickets for both the San Francisco 49ers and Oakland Raiders. Okay, that's number nine. Wow, I can't wait for ten. And number ten, Eric, if I have it right, this is the final request that has to be met in order to make it worth returning to the show. During baseball spring training next year, we do a series for charity best of seven-year baseball or softball team with you coaching. If you want to play, there's something about me coaching. Uh -huh. It's very confusing, and I'm not sure what that is. Okay. Now... Uh, Johnny, as, as uh, Eric's representative, I am going to... Did you talk to him about these demands, Johnny? Yes, Robin, I did. Oh. What did, what did you say about them? <laughs> I said that they were unrealistic. What did Eric he say? Said, he said, fuck you. Mm. <laughs> All right. So that's about as far as I was able to go with that negotiation. <laughs> I'm thinking of making a counteroffer right now. All right, here's my counteroffer. He, he, he if he comes back on the show, guy. Johnny, take a note. You have a pen? I uh, yeah, All right. All right. I'm getting it right now. Here's my offer. If Eric comes on the show, I uh, offer him a sandwich, <laughs> and um, I'll lock him in a pet cage. 
Okay. <laughs> that that's was it. All right, first of all, Eric, let me take it seriously now. <laughs> all right, here we go. Eric, number one, the name Eric the Midget. That is your name. I, no, it's I, not. I don't see well, how you... Name people, it's the name people know you by. It's your... It, what, I don't, Sometimes I don't people don't get to... That, that so, is a fucking disrespectful, ignorant word. But, Eric, I can't prevent the callers from calling you Eric the Midget. Let's say I stop calling you Eric the Midget. Let's say I call you Eric the Actor. Okay? Let's say I agree to that. And let's say Robin agrees to it. What? I don't think I've ever called you Eric the Midget. Eric the complaining midget. <laughs> Maybe I called you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, but well, Eric, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you called him that. I can't stop the world from calling you Eric the midget. Eric the annoying midget. <laughs> Do you understand that? That I can't promise you that? He can't, he can't guarantee that, Eric. Somebody may refer to you as that. Eric the loudmouth midget. Okay. Fred, uh, stop with those now. Eric the obnoxious midget. All right. Eric, number two. <laughs> the idea of the, you being ungrateful or angry. Listen, pe when you're a celebrity, which you are. You got people are going to have a pit. Listen, people bash me all day on that Twitter and on the phone. How can I? I mean, if people feel you're ungrateful or angry or this or that, that comes with fame. I can't stop that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but if you, ex you know, if we notice that something you're doing seems angry, belligerent, ungrateful, we have to point it out. Yes, Gary. Hey, can I just address something about the name part? Yes. Because, okay, so I'm looking at the Hollywood Reporter from a couple of weeks ago. Right. Uh, There's a pretty well-known uh, producer, executive producer of the show Alcatraz. Her name is Elizabeth Sarnoff. So they ask her, what, were, what are some things you would do if you were running TV? She said, I would have more manlyhood on The Bachelor, uh, and I would have more Eric the Midget on Fringe. Meaning, you are known as Eric the Midget now wow. in Hollywood. Did you know By that, a major Eric? producer. A producer. You want, you want still. Now, do you want her not to be able to find you? No. Eric? No, but it's Eric, the actor. I am an actor. I'm not a midget. How about Eric, the I midget actor? Just, no. <laughs> just be bold. But what, what, what Gary's point is, you've become so synonymous with that name that even if I stopped calling you that... It has a life of its man, own. Yeah, I mean, this is a major Hollywood producer who's advocating... Howard. Yeah. He was a New York Times crossword puzzle, Eric the Midget. Right. Oh, yeah, but by the way, that's something I would still have yet to get back from you, Johnny. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> what, you lent him your copy? Well, a, a, copy. Fan, a fan hand, handed me a copy, and Johnny took it and said, let me make copies of it. I'll send it to you, and more than a year later, I still have yet to get it. Hey, Johnny, it. I, I got to agree with Eric on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, that's a quite an honor to be in the New York Times crossword puzzle. You got to get that to him. We'll get that yeah, but that's uh, a side negotiation. That has nothing to do with that. That has nothing to do with me, wow. though. That's between you and your agent, Johnny Prado. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Now, Eric, number three, all the verbal abuse, all of this you call verbal abuse. Uh, look, if the fans are bullying you, what can I do? Either you don't want your fame, Eric. Or you do. Number four, enough of putting me in the whack pack. Listen, what difference does it make where I put you? You don't have to associate with the whack pack. Eric, the whack packer. I'd rather be associated with a friend that I've made named Jim from Raleigh, who is considered a regular caller, not considered a whack pack. Everyone figures you're a whack pack. I'll tell you why. You're part of the characters. You're part of the crew. You're part of the fun of the show. You don't have to consider yourself part of the whack pack. But people do. They 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 do lump you in with that. Is uh, Marianne from Brooklyn? Marianne from Brooklyn is not in the whack pack. She's not in the whack no. pack. No, she's too is normal. King of all blacks in the whack pack. Yes. He is. Mm, no, no, okay. he's not. All right. No, I mean Marianne has a funny voice, so maybe she is. But 
I mean, Elephant Boy's in the whack pack. Well, Elephant Boy is funny. Wrong with him. Yeah, well. Well, so, I mean, you know. <laughs> he shit his pants on the subway and then went to an appearance. Shh. All right. All right, all right so that's debatable, but okay. No, he's in the whack pack. No, I mean, enough of, of oh, you mean Eric's in the whack pack. Yeah. Right, okay. Howard, you say you have many connections. I mean, uh, Eric... Now I, he, what is the demand there? Th- that he wants more acting gigs, that I don't get him enough. I mean, Eric, it's a miracle that I got you two acting gigs. It's a miracle. You've never acted oh, in your... you got it more than two, because there's been four or five he turned down. Right. I mean, listen, Eric, when you're a beginner actor, you got to take what you get. You can't be so damn picky. Everybody's saying yes, not no, when they start out, Eric. Yeah. Uh, you have been, you've been sitting... On one connection for four seasons. What's that? Your movie wife just ended her fourth season of In Point Sight. Yeah. Over the weekend. Oh, we're I supposed- would like to be on that one. Yeah, but we're I can't- supposed to force her to put you on the show. Listen, Eric, I'm gonna. I'll cut to the chase. I can't agree to any of these demands. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you know, I'm not going to go through them point by point. There isn't <laughs> one demand in here that makes any sense. You can't, well, you, if we can't... Um... You were a caller. You called into my show. I always enjoyed having you on. I would enjoy having you on in the future. I can't tell you I'm not going to put you on hold. I can't do any of that. So, I, I, again, I don't think you're in any position to make any demands. And I'm not going to get you box seats and trips to the Bunny Ranch if it comes up. Las you, Vegas. If you if you are good enough, that'll happen. But I can't guarantee you that. Read what the first paragraph says then. All right. What is the first paragraph? Well, would you tell me what it says? It says that each and every one of them has to be agreed upon for me to return. Well, Goodbye. I don't agree, if, I don't agree to they, any of them. If they are not, well... I won't return. Goodbye. All right. Well, then that's it, I guess. Because I'm not going to agree to any of these commands. Demands. Eric, look. What about Pit Boss? What about Beezit? What about Adult Swim? Johnny's talking sense to you. I mean, all of these things are things he turned down. These are big things. You know, there was a website. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I've I've never you take one of those out of there because I've never turned down Pit Boss. You never t- you, you actually did because Pit Boss they are their criteria was that you go on Stern at that time and you did not want to go on. So that was a turn down. Well, that's only because <laughs> of that stipulation. Well, then you'd refuse the job. You turned it down. That's right. Yeah, you turned it down. I mean... Eric, the only... Johnny's telling the only good thing that's ever come out of your life is this show. That's it. That's it. Anything that comes out acting-wise, being invited to the Bunny Ranch, it's only because you were on the show. All the people he's met, all the... Any of it. If you don't want to be on the show, that's fine. I don't want... As you say, your health gets affected by the fans. Then don't... Don't be a part of it. But if you want no, to be a he's talking about He's talking about Stern Fan Network. I told him the same thing. Tell him not don't, to read it. I don't even read don't, that. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. I don't read that, you Eric. don't look at it. You don't see it. Eric, I don't read Stern Fan Network. I, I was meeting athletes and stuff prior to me being on this show. Then go ahead and have your life. You don't need us. Right. and But, but don't be upset with Johnny when he can't get you gigs. It's all going to dry up. I told him right out, I can't do it. Johnny's saying in order to be your manager or whatever he is, his agent. There's nothing to manage. There's nothing to manage when you're not on. You know. So you're in no position. Don't swim, Howard. Johnny, he's in no position to negotiate. (laughs) I, I, I tried to tell him that before we made the call. That. You know the 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 fucking the Adult Swim. He got to deal with Adult Swim. Um, what was the deal? Let me hear the deal. Well, I don't know. He was supposed to play some kind of little satanic thing. And it's just <laughs> his voice. Yeah. It was, it, it was satanic, and and uh, he said, no, he don't like that satanic. Eric, content. you ever watched, I'm Eric, kidding. have you ever watched the show True Blood? Devil. Hold it, Johnny. Let me talk. A cartoon devil. Eric, have you ever watched the show True Blood? 
Yes, every right. episode. Do you ever I'm see? Me listening. too. Do you ever see the vampires on there? They don't turn down the role because they're playing something satanic. It's a role. It's a make believe. Yeah. It, That's acting. You got offered a cartoon and you turned it down because you uh, you thought it was. Don't a, swim. Can you imagine? So you're not an actor, Eric. Because an actor plays a role. You don't. You're not real. You're not really satanic. I played a role don't for say, eight fucking years about that. on the show. But do you think? Do you think the guys on on True Blood should have turned on the role because it's satanic, or that they're really vampires? No. So why would you turn down the role of a of a satanic character? You didn't like the words they were saying. What words? I don't even. Know. What were the words, Eric? I don't remember the lines of dialogue now. Well, we yeah, but Eric, every line, body, every line in your yourself. email to me is "fuck you, asshole." Yeah, the, what words do you object to? Yeah, I mean, where where are there words that you could object to? <laughs> you got the foulest little mouth I ever heard. I mean, yeah. what is this? Unbelievable, you know. And then Howard, you know, you got to understand that he gets mad at me, and I mean, he gets mad at me. I, I know. You guys, some voicemails, and and he gets mad. I got. Big kids. I got a fucking nine year old and a fucking two and year old, two two and a half year old. Right. He's got a young nine year old wants me to throw fucking baseballs all day at him, which I can't do because oh. my ankles are killing me. Of course, you're an old <laughs> man. Ankles are killing me for fucking picking up the goddamn two and year old, two year old and chasing him. Yeah, he's the same I age I am. Grand, I got a grandson now. That exposes himself to everybody that he <laughs> Eric, in other words, what Johnny... Let me interpret for Eric. What Johnny is saying, Eric, the guy's got a very busy life. He's willing to help you out, but you got to help yourself. you got to understand, when you turn down a major cartoon because you think it's major. satanic, that's like saying, I turn on the role of a vampire on True Blood because it's satanic. That's absurd. Or, or he's not the... It's not even a human or a... It's it's a cartoon. Yeah, it's a right, cartoon. Nobody could even see him. Eric, it was a cartoon you turned down. Do you understand my point? Yeah, it's a cartoon. Am I getting through to you at all? Yes, I understand that. Yeah, you need someone who talks sense to you. I'm in show you know, business. Beezid, I didn't turn Beezid, down roles. Beezid, you know, uh, came with a wonderful, wonderful offer. Um, there was another company that did porn that came... All right, porn I understand he doesn't want to do. That I understand. Well, I'm not talking about doing porn. It wasn't for porn uh, to make a porn movie. It was to promote a porn movie. Oh. And he watches so, porn. Like, He's certainly not opposed to it. And, and, and uh, he didn't want to do those events. Eric, why wouldn't you promote a porn? You love. You went to the Bunny Ranch. You love uh, You love porn stars. Why wouldn't you... I know, I'm like... Johnny, are you referring to the Vanessa Blue yes. website? Right. Oh. Yeah. Why did yeah, you turn that down? Up there. Not yeah. sure why, really. Yeah, you see, Eric, <laughs> listen to me. You're a little loopy. Yeah. No, you were. You were. Saying Eric, you I want, want you to be happy. Like Don't that. call into. Let, let, Johnny, let me talk to Eric. Uh, Eric, I want you to be happy. Don't call into the show if it doesn't make you happy. But you're not thinking clearly on a lot of these topics. When Johnny says to you, and Johnny's thinking clearly, he goes, hey, Eric, I got a wonderful cartoon opportunity for you. And you go, well, oh, it's, <clears throat> it's a satanic cartoon. I don't want to play a devil. And then you go, porno. I don't want to promote a porno. It, it, You've done it before for free. For free. So you got to you know, you listen a little bit to Johnny. And, and I hate to break the news to you. Your calls into this show are the best thing that ever happened to you. But that's your decision to make. And the well is drying up, Howard. I mean, the right. more he's not on the show, the well gets drier and drier. But I don't want to force I, you to be on. No, I, uh, there's no force. No. But we can't bow to these silly demands. No. Eric, I'm not bowing to any of your demands. I only wish one of them was reasonable. <laughs> Can we hone one of these uh, demands to be more of a reasonable demand? And by the way, Eric, if I start giving into your demands, can you imagine all the callers making demands <laughs> oh, of me? Can you imagine the rest of the whack bag? I'll have to memorize oh, rules yeah. for each <laughs> each caller. Jeff the drunk will be right on the phone. Speech impediment man will have me in court. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. see what the fans think. Like, maybe maybe they maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> let me let me hear what the fans of think. Of course I think you probably screwed up any chance of me ever doing another J.J. Abrams show. Why is that? 
uh, the pirated movie. But what has it got to do with me? Didn't Gary just your, read? Your name, your name was supposedly on the cup. Yeah, but I can't do movie. I can't do anything about that if they if, in there. Listen, I got a letter from a woman, by the way, Eric, who tells me in the letter that what these guys do. She she has a husband who knows a guy. They, these guys who deliver these things uh -huh. through the mail, they know the envelopes that these screeners go out in. They open them up, they copy them, and then they put them back in the envelopes. Right. Listen, that's got nothing to do with me. I'm an honest guy. I never would boot. What do you think? I'm going to bootleg a copy of my own movie, a movie they sent me with my name on it? I'd have to be a moron. But by the same token, why would they hold that against Eric? Right. JJ doesn't hold it against Because I'm associated with the show. There's no war going on, Eric. JJ loves me. But what do you want from JJ? He wants to be on Fringe again, he says. Well, I don't know. How, I don't know how I would be able to be back on that show. Of you course, know. you could be back on the show. You could be another character. You could have had an evil twin. Yeah, or they, you could be a parrot. They could put you in a cage and put a <laughs> costume on you. And, and Howard, he got a call today from um, from Robert Mills. There you he got go. A call about being on that show. Um, what is that show, Eric? Take the money and run. Yeah, well, listen. Yeah, where they give uh, you a hundred grand. You gotta hide the money from the police. Right. I told them I'll help you hide the money from the fucking police. I, that's one thing I do know how to do. <laughs> yeah, Johnny should be on that. Show. Yeah, they'll never find. Well, it. let me tell you about that, Eric. <laughs> that offer. Bobby Mills is a personal friend of mine. That's right. right. Number two, Ralph was talking to Bobby and came up with the idea that uh, he should be on it with you, Eric. All this I comes agree. from all this comes from the show, but but you don't recognize it. But listen, I can't stay on the phone any longer because I do have to take a break. Uh, you your could demands do it. are ridiculous. Your demands are being. Here, I'm going to tear them up right now. Listen to this. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's the demands. That's how Johnny's father dealt with demands. You to ask Johnny about demands, he'll tell you. Uh, you're not I don't think my father dealt with them like that. I think he, you know. <laughs> yeah, he never heard you from anyone. You only wish. No, nobody made demands. Normally. But, uh, Eric, listen, uh, your choice, you do what you want. I uh, I still uh, like you, and uh, I would always take a call from you, but uh, you go back and think about it. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to force you to do anything. You, you, you didn't even read the third email that Johnny sent in. The it's third email? Too many emails, Eric. I'm not into any What's demands. What's the third email got to do with anything? Your demands are not met. What did you say about the third? What is the third email? The third email was kind of extending upon some of the demands. Well, oh. they're not even, if it makes them more restrictive, your demands are not met at any level. We don't want don't your even, demands. They don't, they don't even like these demands. Yeah. I don't like these demands, let alone the uh, Howard, third you're level. Gonna, you're going to embellish them some more? <laughs> no thanks. Howard, the, the, Robert Mills, uh, the Robert Mills situation, is that a real situation to put Eric on take the money and run? Right. Is that a real well, legit thing on you the a question. Yeah, I'm saying I believe it is. I mean, I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, you haven't been in the discussion. I'm not. I'm not in the loop on that. But I know Ralph mentioned something to me yesterday about how he thought it would be cool if Eric the Midget was on with uh, him. And okay, well, uh, I think I he recommended this to Robert Mills. So I know. Unfortunately, he called you Eric the Midget. Well, that's who Robert Mills knows. Eric the Midget. You don't know <laughs> Eric the actor. Yeah, yeah, you don't know that, Eric. Yeah, that's something that you got to, you know. Right, what am I going to say? Yeah. Yeah, there's a way to do this. There's a way to do this. What do we do? Well, he's the boss. Well, you, listen, Johnny, you, you've, you've laid it out for him a hundred times. Eric, We're not your... Like I told him, I said, listen to me, you guys. I got a nine-year-old. I got a fucking two-and-a-half-year-old that's the uncle to the three-year-old grandson. Johnny, <laughs> these demands... Johnny, old. tell your client... That, Johnny, down. Johnny, tell your client these demands are ridiculous. I mean, uh, uh, you know, look at this demand. Uh, Eric demands to be made a Supreme Court justice if he calls into the show. <laughs> I mean, that's what how it's, it's just as yeah. viable. It's just as undoable as right. any of the others. But I would say that Eric, I would take your demands to some other place. Yeah, you should go on some other show. <laughs> they might be willing to put up with this. Well, Howard, can we negotiate a little bit? 
No. Not on those demands. So we need all new demands. <laughs> yeah, I think here's what I would suggest, Johnny. Have your client go back and make new demands. And then we'll have a discussion next week. All right. All right. I, I'm, We're going to come up with reasonable new demand. Yeah, reasonable. Yes, Eric. I, I'm still holding a bit of a grudge against Johnny for t a couple of years ago. He, him, Johnny Jr. and a friend went down to Miami to be on SmackDown, and I didn't even get invited to it. And I'm much a much bigger fan of WWE than Johnny or Johnny Jr. Well, so we Eric, went down there, Eric, to bring shoppers down there for the WWE divas that we were working. We, that wasn't no, that wasn't just a trip. That was a, a work trip. Johnny, uh, it works. Well, with, Johnny has a chopper business, Eric. Uh, well, but we can't negotiate that for you with Johnny. Johnny, don't you take Eric everywhere with you, even when you're on business? Whenever he's around here, I do. Howard, I, listen to me. I go to Toys R Us every single fucking day. Every day. If he wants to go to Toys R Us, he's more than happy to come to my house, and we'll go to Toys R Us. And whoever's there, I'd buy toys for. So if he wants toys, he can get toys, too. <laughs> but when you went down to WWE, it was uh, for your was chopper work. business. It was for the chopper. We made a chopper for the dub. We made a, 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 a chopper for McMahon, and they were going to unveil it, and that's why we went there. And it was how come a, you didn't include out. Eric? How come you don't? How come you don't treat him like your son and bring like he? Yeah. How come you? It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was in and out. Right. I wanted to get there, and I wanted to get back. And as you already know from the fringe. You know, a negotiation that Eric, it's you just don't get him in and out. <laughs> See? Maybe you There's should, maybe Johnny, maybe you should breastfeed Eric as well. Oh my God! Yeah, I mean, listen. There's passports. There's oxygen. There's all kinds yeah. of things. Yeah, Eric, you're forgetting have. that wait, if Johnny did invite you, you're a massive headache. <laughs> massive headache. It's not easy. Massive headache. You complain yeah. about everything. Howard, you got to play some of them calls where he called me up about the money. And, and, and I had like four deals on the table that were money. Beezit offered him money. Adult Swim offered him money. Shorty offered him money. And, and, and to get on the show, to call into the show, to promote the show, which he did not want to do, promote. Eric, uh, uh, you, mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned Marty Kleba. I know Marty. Marty took all kind of work when he got his career going. Right. He didn't sit there and turn down a cartoon. Johnny, he didn't sit there and say, "I'm not going to be an elf." Marty Kleber would have would have would have would have would have killed someone to get that role. But now that he's away from the show, he's still got a pretty damn good career going. Yeah. Marty, Marty had a career before we met him. You're our creation. All right, this was like 30 years ago. My grandma used to hang around that Johnny Paleo, you know, that, that little guy with the harmonica. Right. <laughs> I could have got Eric right in there. All right, listen, guys, I got to go. Enough of this negotiation. It's not going well. Uh, Eric, you've got to rethink your role in show business. You're turning down roles left. Would you play a Nazi in a movie, Eric? No. Yeah, why not? You're not really a it's Nazi. A, it's just an act. Yeah, it's an act, Eric. See, that's why I say you're not an actor. Tom, Nobody can call you Eric the actor. Tom Cruise played a Nazi. He's not. No I one thinks he's... And, and Brad Pitt did, too. And Brad Pitt played a satanic vampire. Uh, he played a Nazi also. I think that might have even been a Nazi vampire. Al Pacino played the devil. No, Eric that's wouldn't right. play that. Eric, would you have turned down that role, playing the devil? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> how, about, how, about a, how about a drug dealer? Would you play a drug dealer? No. Whoa. Oh, well, we can't work with you. <laughs> and under these circumstances, you're not an actor. Eric, an actor. Eric, if we wanted to do a music video with you to Thriller, to Michael Jackson's Thriller, would you do that? What do you mean, and play a zombie? No, no, we actually have him do the Michael Jackson part. Only we'll have Jan push him around in a, in a chair so he can dance. Yeah, but even well, Michael in turns chair. into a zombie in the in Thriller. Yeah, he, turns, he turns into a werewolf. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, he turns into something. Eric, would you play a werewolf? No. <laughs> well, how many roles do you think there are? For, you just want to be. You? you just want to be a leading man with a love interest. Yeah, he wants all the George Clooney parts. <laughs>
Is that what you're looking for, the George Clooney part? <laughs> Ocean's 14. Holy if Katy Perry shit. wrote his song, I Kissed a Midget and I Liked It, would you play it in the video? <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, guys, I got to go. Johnny, I love you. Eric, I love you. Hey. You, you know, you're great fun. Uh, and Eric, if anybody out in Hollywood has a nice role for Eric, let us know. Where he doesn't yeah, play please. anything satanic. Call or, him. Right. You know, he won't be a Nazi. He won't be <laughs> a vampire. If anybody's doing a remake of Little Bo Peep or any of that kind of shit, call us. Eric, would you ever play an alcoholic? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. What actor in Hollywood hasn't played uh, an alcoholic? Would you play Casey Anthony in a movie? He'd have to be Kaylee. Yeah, well. <laughs> would you play a shoplifter? No. no. Like, why not? A shoplifter. <laughs> I do that now. Well, what are you going to play, Eric? All right, listen. Wait. I got to go. Wait. I got to go, guys. Wait. This is too funny, but I got to go. Will you let me answer Robin's question? Yes. What I would play is the show in plain sight that I mentioned before. I would play someone that needs to go into the wood sack because... He witnessed a, someone being murdered. Oh, you want to be... going to testify. Well, I see. Right, he just wants this to down. witness a crime. All right, so you would go on Mary McCormick's show in plain sight and play a guy who witnessed a crime. That's it. Right. All right. <laughs> and her, I was normal. Her, her team has to you know, protect me and make sure that I'm able to testify. We get it. We get it. But what if, because of the stress of witnessing a crime, you become an alcoholic and worship the devil? Will you play that? No. It's a part. It's a fucking part. Would you play <laughs> someone, mean. Eric, who had a, a, a debilitating accident, who started taking painkillers and became addicted? No. No. Uh, well, why not? Would you play Mary McCormick's talking baby? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric, I got to go. I, I'll, I'll look forward to right, you I'll, pulling I'll, in or not. I am going to negotiate this, and we're going to get it down. Okay. Good luck, because there's a lot of room All right, yeah. that you got to cover. Let, let us know how it turns out, Johnny. Good luck. Room. Eric, good luck. Thank you. Gary. You've been anti-Eric the Midget for a long time now. I'm not anti-Eric the Midget. I'm anti the way Eric the Midget deals with us, which is a big, which is a big difference. I don't, I don't inherently hate little people, uh, but I probably have a bigger issue with angry, rude people. But okay, yes. So he's an ingrate in your eyes, um, and today proved that more than anything. I thought so. I thought so. I mean, I, I was telling the news. I write up the list for Howard every morning. So on the list this morning, in deference to Eric, I wrote Eric the actor and Johnny Frado at 7 a.m. phone. I wrote Eric the actor. But really, like after hearing him this morning, like fuck him. I swear to God, he's like, he, everything on his list would make him not interesting to our show. But he doesn't get that, which makes him interesting because he doesn't get that. So it really is a catch-22. That leads me to my next question. How much of that list do you think was Eric, and how much did you? Do you think was a uh, contrived Johnny Frado type of stunt? I think it was all Eric. Really? I really do. I think it's all Eric. I think that he thinks he deserves everything. He's got a huge sense of entitlement that has nothing to do with being a little person or anything else. He's got a huge sense of entitlement. I mean, you know, tickets to 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 like one baseball game is enough. He wants season tickets to the Raiders, the San Francisco Giants. And the Oakland uh, and and the Oakland A's, as well as World Series tickets, should any team get in there? Like I don't have access to that oh, shit. Oh, don't forget about the WWE. Oh yeah, that, that that also. But that's I don't. That's not a sport. That's a whole other thing. Right. But you, you know, um, you can't address him that way. We have to make if the audience does. We have to pay. Put money in a fucking jar. I would. Did you see? Did you hear that part? Right. I've read the I, demands. Yeah, They're yeah, terrible. Yeah. But we'll never meet them. That the show will never. Let me tell you something. Dealing with Lady Gaga was a thousand times easier. In fact, it wasn't really that hard at all. Once I booked her on the show, getting her in here was super easy. So is this officially the end of Eric the Midget's tenure on the show? I mean, we'll that, never meet these demandments. It's up to Eric the Midget. He's got to go back and refine his demands. 
I love, I, I, I remember one time dealing with somebody who was in a lawsuit, and the lawsuit started at $3 million was the demand. And it was a frivolous lawsuit, and so his lawyers were all, all about it, all about it, and then it became a $1.5 million lawsuit, then it became we're willing to set it for a million, then it became we're willing to set it for half a million, then it became we're willing to set it for legal fees. And I remember the last thing they came was the lawyer said, just give us 500 bucks. Like that's it. like if Eric came back with like a, you know, give me a Hershey bar, I'd have to think about it. Like Howard said, I'll give you a sandwich. Exactly. Will. Yes. You've dealt with Eric. You know, aside from Gary, you've dealt with Eric probably more than anyone behind that, the scenes. That's true. Is this finally the untimely end of uh, Eric the Midget's tenure on the show? No. No, it will not end. And today was like a home running uh, call. Uh, the negotiation went horrible, and it was just one of the funniest things I've heard in a long time on the show. So I was happy to have him back. Maybe, maybe it's just you need him in like, you know, some distance between appearances because today he was he was great you know he was as delusional as ever so with these demandments how much of that do you think was you know organic to Eric and how much of that do you think was sort of a uh, Johnny Ferrato uh, production no I, I think this is Eric's legit demands I, I've bought into Johnny Ferrato now I like Johnny he, he was funny today with Eric and uh, I think that uh, he just tells Eric, hey, put it out there, whatever you're looking for to get back on the show, and, and Eric just runs with it because, uh, yeah, I don't know if Johnny's even capable of coming up with half the horse shit that was on that list. It was beyond bizarre. Bizarre, yes. I, I, that's a good, yeah, like I said, just completely delusional. He doesn't live in the world the rest of us do. So, uh, and then when Howard went down the list of things that, you know, he, acting gigs he would refuse to take, including being a Nazi, I think being a thief, being a drug addict, uh, so he's very selective. Um, he's got a very short list, just like his legs. Tiny. Mi miniature. Little, little tiny one. So we'll see him again. This is cyclical. He'll be back. The midget will return.